This video will discuss how to work with the journals feature within the plant log web application. Any user can create and view journal records from either the web application or for that matter the plant log mobile app. But this video will focus strictly on the web application. So to get started you simply sign in to your your specified site account. And now that we're signed in the top navigation bar will show you the links to the three main features in the plant log software. And for here, we are going to just click on the middle one for journals. And we are now taken to the journals page. So let's get started by viewing some existing journal records. To do this, we simply were going to select the journal from this pull down list. This will be all the journals that the administrators have created in your site account. And let's go ahead and select the shift communications journal. And by its name, you can assume that this journal is used for shift turnovers and things like that, where the operators want to communicate with each other about what events took place uh, on what shifts. So we will just select this journal. And then the plant log software are going to show all the journal records created in chronological order. So basically, these journal records will always be listed in the most recent entry at the top and then moving into the past one entry to the next. Um, this is important so that when you're reviewing these journal records, you get an accurate, uh, accurate idea on when these events took place in relation to each other. You will then see the name of the user who created the actual journal record. Right here is Brian Dawkins. The category that that person selected when they created the journal record, which is here, and then followed by the actual journal entry that they entered. And that could be any, any amount of text that they want to write to describe what took place, um, what was done to rectify an issue, and so on. If you ever want to look at these records and only focus in on a specific category, you can do that over here from the category pull-down list. So each journal, based on what the administrator has set up, each journal will have a certain list of categories assigned to it. And so this list will only show the categories that are assigned to this particular journal. So if you want to say filter all the journal entries and only look at the ones categorized under the general category, you can select that here. And then you will now get a new list. And now these are all the entries made under the journal cat category. And they are still listed in chronological order, meaning the most recent record first and then moving backwards in time. Okay, so now let's look at how we would go about adding a journal record to this particular journal. So first off, let's go back to this category list and bring it back to all, which will simply just show every, all the records in this journal, uh, regardless of the category. So to add a new journal record, we will come up here to the plus button, up here in the upper right, and we'll click add record. And this small dialog box will appear. So this is how we add a journal record to this particular journal, which is whatever one is selected up here. In this case, it's Shift Communications. And we will first pick a category. And let's just go with, um, let's just make a general journal entry. Okay, and now you're going to see date and time. And here is a date selector right here, as well as a time selector. You can select the time, and this is always in military time. That will be the hour, hour, and this will be the minute. So the date and the time down to the minute will always default to the current time that it is in your local time zone. However, you can always adjust it back to the past to reflect when the event took place that you were actually describing here in the entry section. So the reason for this is uh, for journals, it doesn't really matter so much as to when you are creating this record but it really matters when the event that you're describing had actually taken place. And so for that reason, the software allows you to adjust the time into the past, but not the future. So an example I like to use is, let's just assume there's a cafeteria there at the facility, and at lunchtime, at noon, there was some kind of grease fire in the kitchen. And so uh, you and some other operators were required to go out and uh, deal with that situation there at lunchtime you wouldn't be going into the here in the plant log in the journals and making an entry about it 
at 12 noon while the fire is underway. You would actually be taking care of it then, and then maybe after things settle down, you would be doing making an entry at, say, 2 or 3 o'clock uh, in the afternoon, a few hours after the event took place. For that reason, you would come here and you would actually adjust the time to reflect when the event actually took place so that when the journal record is added to the main list, it will get inserted into the correct area of the list so that it's in chronological order. So that when someone sees it, they can see what events actually happened prior to that and what events actually happened after that. So, and that's, that's the example I'm giving just to adjusting the time, but we're not actually talking about a fire here. We're just making a general journal entry. So let's just put in an entry a description. Let's just say this is a test for the video tutorial. And once you have your journal here, you can type in as much as you want. Of course, you simply just hit the add button. And as you will see, the journal entry will be added to the very top. And that's this one right up here, because this is the most recent journal record that was has been added to this particular journal. So we talked about viewing existing journal records and how to add new journal records. Let's now talk about how to edit existing records. If you notice here in this list, on the left-hand side, you'll see a few records, a few rows that have yellow pencil icons on them. What this is, is, is an indication that these records have been edited from their, ex from their original creation point. So when you create a new journal record, you might put in some details about an event and someone later might either notice that maybe you made a mistake or maybe they want to augment your, your entry to add in some more additional details. For that reason, other users, including yourself, can edit an existing journal record. So let's go ahead and do that and see what that looks like. We'll go up to the same record that we just created and we'll, come, we'll highlight it so that's in blue. And now we will click on this pencil icon in the upper right and, and click Edit Record. And when we do that, it's going to show up just like we created it. It's going to have the same category, the date and time we selected, as well as the entry. We can make any changes now to this record that we like. We could change the category. Let's just say we assume that the um, category is not appropriate. There's a more appropriate category. We can change the category. We can adjust the time. Maybe we, th we realize that the, the event actually took place an hour earlier or and so on. Or we could just add more some additional details here. So we could also just say some additional details. So we're basically adding a little more information to the actual entry section. We can now go ahead and click Edit. And when we click Edit, we're going to get this other dialog that says Edit Reason. And the software is going to require that we put in a reason as to why we are making this edit. So we're not allowed to make any edits just anonymously for no reason. We have to give an explanation as to why we're doing this. And now we can just say adding more details. And that's just our reason as to why we're doing this. And now we can click save. And after we click save, you'll notice that that yellow pencil will appear on the left hand side of this record. Now, if you ever want to know what records were edited or and exactly what were, was edited, you simply highlight the mouse over top of the yellow pencil and this box will appear and it will show what, who edited the record, when they edited the record, the reason as to why they edited the record, as well as the new information that they added along with the previous information. So you can always go back in time and figure out what the original record was prior to it being edited. Um, and that's basically for the purpose of an audit trail so that no one, again, no one can go in and anonymously alter data uh, without anyone else knowing it. So there is a complete trail of everything that's been changed. So that is how you edit a record, uh, a journal record. Now this is something that can only be done in the web application. Uh, users on the mobile app cannot edit records. This, that can only be done here in the web app. Finally, let's discuss exporting journal records. So you can always come to this page and view journal records whenever you like. There are also some journal specific reports that you can view in the reporting section. 
But if you ever want to share this journal records with an external party that maybe do not have access to the plant log software, you can always export journal records from a journal to an Excel file. And to do that, you simply come up here to the upper right corner again, and there is this icon that says export to Excel. So if we click on this, it's very simple. We simply have our journal selected, which in this case is journal shift communications. And then down here in this dialog, we simply want to select the date range of the journal records we want to export. So let's just say a uh, maybe a safety inspector comes on site and wants to see your journal records for the past month. You can come down here and simply just say last month. You can select this preset and this will export the data into an Excel file. And then you can then pass that off to that inspector uh, and he will see only the records that have taken place in last month, whatever the prior month is. Um, you can always go back here as well. And if there is no preset that suits your needs, you can always come up here to custom and then you can enter these two boxes here. And this will be the start date and then this will be the stop date. And then all the records within these two dates will show up in an Excel file. So that is basically just exporting the journal records. You will get all this information into the Excel file. Um, it is just basically the raw data. If you want to um, look at the data in a more interesting way, maybe you want to look at only the exceptions that have taken place, which are these categories that are shown in red. Well, there are reports for that that you can, you can learn about in other videos, but um, just exporting the raw data can be done by simply exporting to Excel. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to watch other videos in this series which cover different aspects of the plant log software.